You ever wish there was an easy way to uninstall bloatware on your phone? Well, Kantar is an incredibly powerful application that lets you do exactly that. You just open the app and it'll show you a list of every single app installed on your phone, including system apps, and you just select whichever app that you want to uninstall, then tap the trash can icon, and that's it. You can then come over to this tab to see a list of any apps that you've previously uninstalled, which you can then quickly restore if you like. And the app even shows you these helpful indicators that tell you whether an app is safe to uninstall or not. Just keep in mind that it does require Shizuku to work. And the only other catch is that it's not available to download via the Google Play Store. But there's a very good reason for that, which is that for this final episode of the best Android apps, every single app on this list is actually not available on the Play Store at all. And we're closing the year off with a bang by featuring not just 10 apps as per usual, but 15. All right, second app on the list today is a super simple, but really handy one called Greentooth. With the app enabled, anytime your phone disconnects from a Bluetooth device, it'll then automatically turn off your phone's Bluetooth after a predetermined amount of time. And that's it, but it actually works really well and will help you to save some valuable battery life. Next up is Google Shortcuts Launcher. And if you didn't already know, Google actually has a bunch of like hidden apps themselves that you sometimes might stumble upon by accident depending on what you're doing on your phone, but they're otherwise nearly impossible to access directly. And so this is an app that places shortcuts to those apps right into your app drawer for easy access. So you get a shortcut to the Google Assistant, a shortcut to the new Passwords Manager, although you do need root access to view the app version instead of this browser version. But you also get a shortcut to the Music Search app, these classic built-in Google games. And then there's my personal favorite, a shortcut to the original Google Weather app, the one with the frog at the top, not the newer version released earlier this year. And speaking of that new weather app, whilst I do quite like its overall look and layout, my biggest complaint is that it doesn't include that little froggy that many of us have grown to love over the years. And so that's where the next app on the list, Weathermaster, comes in, because it essentially combines both the new and old Google Weather apps into the one application. You've got your classic froggy up the top, then there's some really handy weather summary information below that, kind of like Google's AI-powered weather summary feature. Then when you scroll down, you'll see just about any bit of weather information that you might be after, including a live weather radar, which is not something included in either of the stock Google weather apps. And then down towards the bottom here are those familiar weather icons from the new Google weather app. The only thing is that you can't currently drag these around to customize their positions, like what the native Android weather app allows for. And I also wish that the fonts matched the original weather apps a little bit better and that there was a light theme too. Next up is Chrono, and this is a super powerful clock application with a really clean and intuitive interface. And it ain't rocket science, you can use the app to create alarms, view weld clocks, create timers, and start a stopwatch. And I mean, none of that is necessarily groundbreaking, but it's the app's super clean yet still unique design alongside all of these really thoughtful animations that makes it worth checking out in my opinion. Plus, there's a heap of tweaks that you can make within the settings, and it's completely free and open source too. Now, I know lots of people love the Nothing OS design language, and it feels like there's been a really neat movement of designers and developers creating Nothing-inspired apps over the past year or so, and one of the newer options available is this one called Nothing Notes. And just a heads up, this app is very early in its development cycle, so don't expect a huge amount of features right now. In fact, I'd actually probably prefer to call this a lists app in its current state instead of a notes app because there's actually no way to add a body of text to a note at the time of making this video, but it does support cross device syncing, which is cool. You can also add tasks and the developer has plans to turn this into a fully fledged note taking app with all the bells and whistles. So I'm excited to see how it improves going forward. But if you actually want a first party app developed by nothing themselves on your non nothing phone, then you can actually grab a very specific version of the nothing recorder app from APK mirror that works perfectly. And again, if you love the nothing design language, then you are going to love this app. You've got three recording modes, normal, voice focus, and environment, although I couldn't really tell a difference between the three in my testing, but you've also got these neat waveforms that show whenever sound is picked up. You can also enable this high quality format toggle if you like, and look, it's not necessarily gonna win any awards in terms of functionality as far as voice recording apps go, but in terms of design, yeah, it's right up there. 
All right, real quick, before we get to the next app, just wanted to take a moment to talk about this incredible new water bottle that I've just started using called the PureViz 2 from today's video sponsor, Lark. And there are three reasons why I'm super pumped to be using this bottle. Firstly, for far too long, I've just been using water bottles made out of plastic. And not only is this really bad for the environment, but it also doesn't take long for them to get super dirty. But with the PureViz 2, not only does it have built-in UVC technology that purifies water at the push of a button, alongside a plant-based filter that removes pollutants and improves the taste of the water, but it's also completely self-cleaning, activating every two hours, meaning the bottle stays clean and completely odor-free. Secondly, I love my water cold, and I really do not like drinking room temperature water. And well, the PureViz 2 is double wall vacuum insulated, which means my water is now kept cold for up to 24 hours, which is amazing. And then finally, honestly, I've just been needing to drink more water. And because this bottle pairs to the Lark app, I can now automatically track my hydration consumption and set hydration goals. And as a result, I'm now drinking way more water each and every day. And so if you're interested in upgrading your own hydration, then check out the PureViz 2 from Lark using the first link down in the description below. Okay, here's an incredible app called Contextual App Folder that's actually very old now. In fact, it was last updated in 2017, can you believe? But somehow it still works perfectly on my nothing phone 2A running Android 15. If you haven't heard of it, this app basically lets you create a folder on your home screen that will actually change what apps are shown inside of it depending on various triggers. For example, I've got this list of apps set up by default, but then whenever I connect a Bluetooth audio device to my phone, that list of apps changes to show some of my favorite media streaming apps like YouTube, Netflix, Spotify, and so on. Then if I connect to my car's Bluetooth system, the folder will once again update, but this time it'll show me just my music playing apps and then also some navigation related apps. And man, the sky's the limit here. There are so many triggers that you can set up, including Tasker Intense, which literally means almost anything is possible. Then we've got an app called SharePost. And if you've ever found yourself needing to share some information, but you're worried about where you're sharing the information to and who might inadvertently get access to it, well, this app will make the process way more secure. So let's say you wanna share something on a forum or Discord, for example, or maybe you need to share some sensitive information, but the message platform that you're using doesn't support end-to-end -end encryption. Well, instead of just hoping for the best, you can instead paste your information into SharePaste, then set an expiry. You can also enable this burn on read toggle, which means the link created by SharePaste will be destroyed after it's been opened once. Then you just tap encrypt and share, and that's it. You'll then be presented with a much more secure link to your information that you actually have control over. And speaking of sharing links, you ever find yourself receiving a music link from a friend to a music app that you don't have installed on your phone? Like maybe you use Spotify, but your friend keeps sharing you links to YouTube music songs. Well, Radomi is a handy little app that basically lets you select what app to open a shared song in. So as you can see, here's a YouTube music link, but if I don't have that app installed, when I tap on it, it'll launch this bottom sheet interface that shows me all of these other music streaming services. And I can then tap whichever one that I do use. So Spotify, for example, and Radomi will then intelligently open that song in Spotify. There's also a few customizations that you can make within the app settings. Plus it's also got that modern material based design. So it blends right into your phone's interface beautifully. Okay, check this out. If I swipe into my quick settings panel and over to this second page here, take a look at all of these advanced quick settings toggles that I have set up. We've got a toggle to turn on or off my phone's adaptive brightness setting. I can even quickly enable or disable USB debugging. I can launch straight into my favorite app or change my phone's display timeout settings just by tapping this toggle here. And you might be wondering how to get these toggles onto your own phone. And well, they're all enabled using an app called Quick Tiles. And as you can see, there are stacks more on top of those that I just mentioned, including forcing your device's rotation to preset orientations. You can set up a toggle to capture a screenshot. There's also a toggle to switch between various ringer modes. And as I said, there are a heap more on top of those as well. Then we have Wikireader. And if you're someone who loves perusing Wikipedia, then this is an app that makes the experience 10 times more visually aesthetic. 
You just search for whatever article you're looking for. So let's say Google Pixel, and there you go. You'll be taken to that Wikipedia page, but now it's in this beautiful material-based interface that just looks so much better than the default website. I only wish that there was a way to see all related articles in the search box so that I can select exactly which article I wanna open. So hopefully that gets added at some point in the future. After that is FadCam. And if you've ever found yourself needing to record a video with your phone screen off, like to use your phone as a dash cam with Google Maps open, for example, or to catch up some footage in a dangerous situation, then this is the app for you. With the app open, you just hit start and then you can close the app, use your phone as normal and even turn your phone's display off and the app will continue recording video using your phone's camera the entire time. Once done, you just jump back into the app and hit stop and that's it. All right, second to last is an app I've been using for over five years now called Boost for Reddit. And this is actually a third party Reddit client that used to be incredibly popular until Reddit enforced all of those new API rules last year, after which point it was taken down from the Play Store and supposedly stopped working. But here's what's amazing. You can actually get it to work by following a relatively straightforward process that the good folks over at Revanced have provided on their GitHub page, which I will leave linked below. I won't walk you through it in detail, but as a rough guide, you just need to follow the steps to create an app on the Reddit developer page, then download the Boost APK via APK Mirror, follow the steps to patch it using the revanced manager application, then install it, and there you go. You will now have a fully functioning version of the Boost for Reddit app, and I just love this app for its clean and highly customizable design. And what's also great is that you don't ever need to repeat that setup process. Even if you get a new phone, you can just transfer your patched APK over and it'll work perfectly. And then finally for today, if you're loving the fact that you've got all of these new non Play Store app recommendations and you're hungry for more, then you've got to check out the app Neo Store. This is actually an F-Droid client, meaning the thousands of apps available on F-Droid are also available within the Neo Store app. But as you can see, it's got a beautiful material-based design with all of these fluid animations, and it just makes browsing through all of these apps such a pleasant experience. And what's amazing is that not only can you discover all of these amazing apps via the Neo Store, but you can also keep them updated too via this page here. So it's absolutely an app worth checking out. But there you have it, 15 amazing apps that you cannot find on the Google Play Store. If you enjoyed the video, then a sub would be greatly appreciated. But that's it. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will catch you later. Bye.